I hope you guys are doing good. After watching this tutorial, you will learn this four trending effect. So make sure you watch the whole thing. I have already arranged the clips on the timeline. This is the first effect which we are going to create. Apply a twister on the second clip in which the character jump. Copy my twister settings. Simply click on the stopwatch icon for speed so we can play with the speed by using keyframes. The first keyframe value will be 100 and for the second keyframe value change it to anywhere between 3 to 6 so the clip looks extremely slow and dramatic. After setting up the keyframes press F9 to easy ease the keyframes and go inside the graph section and follow my graph. So we are done with adding twist up perfectly on the clip and it's looking clean and ready for the effect. Now right click and pre comp the clip, pick up roto brush tool then double click on the clip and start selecting the subject. I will also share this project file in my description. Once done with selecting the subject move few frames ahead on the timeline and keep checking if the rotoscope is tracking your subject till the clip ends. Once this line turns completely green click on freeze frame and wait for few minutes. Now go back to the main comp and you can see we got the cutout of the subject. Now duplicate the clip by pressing Ctrl D and press E to open effect section. Delete rotoscope from the bottom clip to recover the background. Duplicate the upper clip and start animating its anchor point by clicking on the stopwatch icon. For the first keyframe, don't change any value. But for the second keyframe, adjust the subject accordingly so the effect looks perfect. Once done adjusting keyframes, easy is them by pressing F9 and go inside the graph section. Try to copy my graph. Now again duplicate the middle clip in which we have already animated the anchor point and change the value of second keyframe. Decrease the value of opacity for both clips in the middle to complete the effect. This is the final thing we got in the end. You can also add shake and zoom in the clip to make it more impactful on the beat. The second effect is one of my masking effect but don't skip this thinking that you already know. Watch this effect till the end and you will know how I create a smooth flow in this transition. First we will add Twixter, copy my settings and this is the layout for the keyframe structure. Easy is them and go inside the graph section and copy my graph. So this is the flow you will get once you perfectly add Twixter. Now pre-comp the clip, duplicate it by pressing Ctrl D and right click on the upper clip then select freeze frame, pick up the pen tool and start masking out the subject. Also make sure you change the preview quality to full before masking any clip. After masking start animating the value of mask according to the transition you have in your mind. In my case I am simply going to animate the anchor point. Now easy is the keyframe and go inside the graph section. Try to copy my graph. I will now reveal the secret to make a smooth flow. Add keyframe for scale and anchor point. Then move few frames ahead. Add keyframe for both scale and anchor point by zooming into the clip. But make sure to keep the subject in the center. Now easy is the keyframes and go inside the graph section. Try to copy my graph to create a perfect flow. After completing the effect, this is the final output till second effect. This is the third effect you are going to learn and it is one of my favorite masking effect till now. Make sure you watch it carefully and don't miss anything. This is the clip which we are going to work on. I will reverse the clip so I can get close to the subject's head and the transition might turn out smoother. Before adding Twixter, I will pre comp the clip because we cannot directly add Twixter on a reversed clip. I will fast forward this Twixter part as this takes time. Once you perfectly add Twixter, pre-comp the clip, then duplicate it and freeze frame the upper clip. Now pick up the pen tool and take a cutout of the subject's head perfectly. Once done masking, I will separate the mask from the main clip and duplicate it. Invert the mask of the bottom layer. Now let's rename both of the masks. I'll name the bottom layer background, in short BG and upper layer head. I will hide the BG layer because I don't want any confusion. Now before animating head layer, I will keep its anchor point in the center of the mask so the head spins perfectly. Now press R to open rotation, add a keyframe, place it at the end of the clip without changing its value and rotate the head in any direction. Then select the keyframe, press F9 to easy ease them and try to copy my graph. Make sure to turn on this motion blur as this thing adds extra realism in your transition. Now once done with animating the head layer, hide it and unhide the BG layer and animate it by adding keyframe. Add keyframes for scale and anchor point, place them at the end of the clip without changing any value and again add keyframe at the initial part of the clip by zooming inside the head. 
and also make sure to zoom in equally in the center. Now select the keyframes, press F9 to easy ease and try to copy my graph. Also don't forget to unhide the head layer. So this is how the transition is looking but one thing is still off that the head is directly appearing on the screen. So for head we need to create a transition. Precom the head layer again and animate its scale. Place it at the end of the clip without changing its value and add one more keyframe at the initial part of the clip. Now select the keyframes, press F9 to easy ease and try to copy my graph. After adding shake and exposure, this is the output. This is the fourth and also the last effect you will learn right now. Let me know in the comment section on which effect you want me to make the next tutorial. And I promise next tutorial will be uploaded within a week. So this is the clip we are working on for the fourth effect. First we have to fix the clip for a perfect transition. I will reverse the clip and pre-comp it before adding Twixter. Applying Twixter perfectly takes time so I'll again fast forward the process. The Twixter is looking perfect and clean for the transition. Let's pre-comb the clip, duplicate the layer and apply freeze frame on the part where we want to create the mask. Pick up the pen tool and try to create a perfect circle mask. Also don't forget to change the preview quality to full. Invert the mask, separate the layer from the main clip and add keyframe for scale and anchor point. Place them at the end of the clip. Again add keyframe at the initial part of the clip while zooming inside the inverted mask and make sure it is in the center. Now select the keyframes, press F9 to easy ease and try to copy my graph. The animation seems slow so I will select the keyframes and while holding alt I will try to move them closer. Let's cut the extra part and try to make it more engaging by duplicating it and placing it few frames behind. But the transition is not yet perfect for that I will duplicate the upper layer, uncheck the invert box and pre-comb the layer. Now I'll add keyframe for anchor point, place it at the end of the clip. I will again add a keyframe and place it at the initial part of the clip. I will remove the extra part and try to adjust the first keyframe value and crop. So this is the final output we got. You can also try using these types of overlays which looks engaging. I will share this fire overlay in the description. So from the start till the end, this is how it looks. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. I hope this tutorial helped you guys. Also let me know which effect tutorial you want me to upload next.